Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm going to show you how to mix acoustic guitar in just two steps. Okay, so we've got a song here that's driven by acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitar is the main instrument in the song. It's actually, I believe, the instrument that opens the song, yeah, by itself. So one of the challenges of working with a song like this is you have to be able to make the acoustic guitar sound good by itself and inside the track. So let me play you what this acoustic guitar sounds like by itself, and then I'll play you what it currently sounds like in the track. Okay, so here's the acoustic guitar by itself. Okay, uh, now I'll unsolo it, and here's what it sounds like in the track with no processing on it. Uh, let, me, let me mute that vocal for you so you can get a better idea of what it sounds like. Okay, so obviously the first thing we need to do is we need to EQ it to sit in the track correctly. And then we'll have to make sure, we'll have to go check that it still sounds good by itself opening the song. Okay, so the first thing we're going to reach for here is the Pro EQ. Now the first thing to consider is our high pass filter, okay? Because this is a mic'd instrument, it can have some residual room noise and some extra low end down there that we aren't hearing. So let's take a look here. Yeah, see when we're hitting the acoustic guitar here, there's a bunch of low end blasts that we're not even hearing, so we can we can get rid of that. We can come up a little bit. So right there is something I'm comfortable with. We're getting rid of that extra low end that we're not really hearing, and then we're just scooping off a little bit of that 100 area, which is that low end ringing on the guitar, okay? Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a closer look at that low end area and that 100 area and make sure there's not too much boominess, especially since it is being hit, okay? So let's take a look here. See right there, that's that boominess and that ringing that we want to get rid of. Otherwise that'll poke through and that'll make our low end a little cloudy, so let's get rid of that. Notice we're using a narrow bandwidth because we don't want to remove too much of the surrounding frequencies. Right there sounds good. That's a clean, comfortable low end for me, okay? So let's move up a little bit and see if there's any frequencies that are ringing. One of the battles you can face when mixing acoustic guitar is some ringing frequencies, especially if you mic the instrument, you will get some resonance off the body of the guitar. So let's, let's see if there's any of those we need to take care of. So there's, there's a couple there and we might have to take care of those, but right now they sound like they're, they're in key. That's what you want to look for, if there's anything that's poking out or if there's anything that's ringing that's not in key. So that's poking out quite a bit, that's, that's a little bit too much for my taste, so let's pull that back a little bit. And bear in mind, those frequencies will poke out a little bit more after you compress it. They'll come up a little bit, so it's good to take care of them before you add compression. That sounds good. There's still something in the low end area that's ringing, so let's, let's find that real quick. there. 
So let's pull that back. We might have to pull that back quite a bit there. Okay, that sounds good. That took care of our low end ringing and a little bit of our low mid ringing there, all right? So notice on both of those, I used a very tight bandwidth. The cue is all the way up because we just want to pull out a specific frequency. We don't want to pull out any of the surrounding frequencies. Otherwise, we'll ruin the body of the guitar, okay? So take a listen one more time. I'll flip the EQ on and off and you can hear those four moves in action, okay? So here is beforehand and then I'll click the EQ on and you can hear what it does. So you can hear when I click the EQ on, the acoustic guitar becomes a lot more clear and it gets a little bit more crisp on top, but we don't lose all of the low end and all of the body of the guitar. We're just trimming some of it out because we don't need all of it. There are other instruments that are taking up that low end, like the bass and the electric guitars and the piano, of course, can contribute some low end as well, okay? So for now, we're going to move on. We might have to add a little bit of high end, but I might come back and do that after the compression. Okay, so step two to mixing acoustic guitar is, of course, compression, okay? So we're gonna reach for the fat channel compressor here because I like to use some of the vintage emulations in here, especially because they add a little bit of color to the guitar. So we're gonna use this one here, the Everest compressor, and we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can get uh, maybe like three dB of compression here, okay? One of the things I like to do first with this compressor is crank it up too much and see how the attack and release are interacting with the guitar. So the release was a little bit too fast. And the attack is a little bit too fast for me. So we'll put the attack on slow and we will put the release on medium so it's a little bit more in time with the guitar. That's good. So you can see the needles moving in time with the guitar there. So now let's pull this back and let's get the uh, appropriate amount of compression on here. So I usually shoot for like three to four dB of compression there, and that, that's around that area, so let's make sure the, the makeup gain is right now. So we're gonna add a little bit back. up for the low end we cut on the EQ, okay? Uh, that seems about good to me. The compression isn't, isn't changing the sound too much. It's just doing what it's supposed to, compressing the guitar. If you'll notice though, you may think I trimmed off too much of the low end with the EQ, but when we put the compressor in, we get some of that low end, low mid area back, okay? It's actually accentuating the attack of the acoustic guitar in a really nice way. So let's stick that back in the track and see how it's sounding now. Okay, so the low end, the low mids, and the mid range sound okay, um, but I'm lacking a little bit of high end, a little bit of crispness a little bit of crispness on it, excuse me. Uh, so let's add a little bit of that in. And I'm gonna do this in the track so I know what sounds good in the track rather than just by itself. That right there is the area I'm looking for, that high end crispness. So let's, let's get it right now. No, 
notice I extended the cue a little bit so we can get some of this high mid area in there. That sounds good to me right there that about 4 db area at 7k now we're getting that high-end sparkle on the guitar that i want and it sticks out it stands out and you know it's the main instrument in this track uh, but it looked like we were lacking a little bit in this mid-range area the high mids so let's let's see if we can add a little bit of that So this 1 to 2k area can make your acoustic guitar more full body and more full frequency range. It doesn't seem like we need much. about a db touch gives it a little bit more balance inside the mix so let's take a listen to the whole guitar inside the mix now see if it's okay so it sounds good inside the mix let's take a listen to just the instruments by themselves and make sure they blend well together Sounds good. Now let's take a listen by itself, because this guitar starts off the song by itself. So let's make sure it sounds good on its own, as well as inside the mix. That sounds good. It's got a nice high end to it. It's got nice mid range. There's no ringing frequencies and the low end isn't too heavy, but we still have some weight down there. So that is it. Those are your two steps to mixing acoustic guitar. First off, you want to get your EQ right, get your high pass filter set, make sure there's no ringing frequencies, no resonance poking out. Then move to your compression, get two to three dB of compression on your compressor of choice. Usually you don't want a very fast attack, you don't want to squash the acoustic guitar, and then make sure your release is in time. And that's it. If you have to do any more EQ after the fact, like we did here, a little bit more EQ, add some high end, do that, get that set, and then make sure your acoustic guitar sits at a good volume in the mix. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful for you guys. If you are looking for a mixing engineer, click the link in the description, head on over to our website, and request a quote for your next project. And we'll see you in the next video. Music